Hello everyone, hope you are doing well. Just under a week to go before the Conference League final, but exactly a week to go until a certain person's book comes out. We'll get onto that in just a second. But Julian, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. And Gonzo, oneself? I'm okay, mate. I'm okay, thank you. Looking forward to this, that's for sure. Yeah, me too, actually. I'm a bit nervous, to be honest with you. I'm a little bit... I, I shouldn't little... make you nervous, Gia. Hey, nice one. Um, Julian, right, we're going to talk some big West Ham um, topics, a bit of a catch-up uh, post-season, really. But first of all, we want to start with the Conference League final. Um, a couple of questions on this, really. What's your thoughts on this competition? Because there's obviously more tournaments now than there was when you played. And second of all, what do you make of West Ham getting to the final? Well, we used to play in the Anglo-Italian Cup. Um <laughs> And we never made the final. But listen, it it is a final. Um, OK, it's, it's a conference final, but nevertheless, is a final. And for me, West Ham have, have done well to get there. Um, so when you're playing against teams at similar levels, they're never easy games. Um, so to get to the final, for me, is good. Do you, do you fancy us to go on and win it? Yeah, I don't see why not. This is, it's all on the day for me, a cup final. doesn't matter if you're... You're playing Man City or whoever it is, is is all on the day. So I would expect West Ham to to win the, the final, if I'm honest. Not not like from my heart, but my head says it as well. I, it's just I do expect them to win it. Do you um I mean that's that's the conference league, and yeah, I, I mean I, I totally agree, but I'd forgotten about the Anglo Italian Cup actually until you mentioned it. That's that's brought back some memories. Um what about the, the Premier League campaign? It's been it's been a funny one as a fan to, to watch. Um, almost like almost like a season of, I guess, three thirds in that. The first two thirds, but I thought were, were bloody awful. What's been your take of the uh, the Premier League campaign? Well, <laughs> listen, we're West Ham fans. Listen, I, I play from the clubs, a yo-yo club. Sometimes we have a great season. <laughs> the next season is not so good. It's always been the same, um, and this season's obviously no different. And yet we, we we have struggled for the majority of it. Um, but like I said, we, we were safe with a couple of games to go. So it's, it's a difficult one. I mean, it's spent quite a lot of money as well. Um, but obviously the players haven't really gelled together. I mean, people say that players need time to settle in. But when you're spending 30, 40 million pounds on players, they shouldn't need time to settle in. They should settle in straight away. Obviously, but they should be good players if they're costing that much money. Um, whether they're coming from Italy, Brazil to play in England, for me, it shouldn't matter. They should hit the ground running. So, and unfortunately, they haven't. I, I certainly look at it myself, just going on what you said. It's, it's not, doesn't seem to be something that inflicts, that affects other clubs. There's a lot of other clubs who sign players from overseas and they settle in and, and they, they do okay. Was there anyone in particular who, who did catch your eye? I know, I know there's a few that have not worked out. Anyone in particular you liked of the new signings? To be honest, I, I don't really watch a lot of football. Um, my missus always says to me, oh, West Ham won or, or they lost or, or things like that. I, I don't really watch a great deal of football. One, because it really frustrates me. <laughs> I mean, what, not, not playing, not being able to not play. Playing. Yeah, listen, I think about West Ham in Upton Park every day. Something goes through my mind every single day about that place. Um, and it frustrates me that I can't play anymore. Um, even though it's been like it's been like 25 years that I haven't played for West Ham and it, it still affects me. Um so it, it does frustrate me, and I don't. I don't watch a lot of football, but like obviously, I, I still speak to to West Ham fans and things like that. And it's the same old. It's just, for me, it's the same old old question or answer. At the end of the day, players should give a hundred percent every single game. And the ones that I have watched, there's individual players that don't do that. I remember a couple of seasons ago, I done West Ham Man United at Old Trafford, and. Mikel Antonio was up top on his own. He didn't try a leg. He did not try a leg. But you couldn't bring him off because we had no one else on the bench. Yeah. Now, for me, yeah, look, listen, we all have bad games. We all make mistakes. That's that's a part of football and a part of life. But there's no excuses not to give 100% every single game. And play it, in my opinion, players don't do that anymore. Not all of them, but quite a lot of them. Um, Julian, there you were talking about thinking about playing at Upton Park in that. One thing I was intrigued to ask you, you 
played at the Berlin, but you managed at the London or coached at the London Stadium. What's your thoughts on the new gaff? I, I don't like it. I didn't like it when I was there. It's um, is it Dungan Road? It's a nice stadium. It's not a West Ham stadium. Listen, when you played at Upton Park, where it's enclosed and the fans are quite brutal, <laughs> it is is a great place to play football. I mean, I played there when I was 17 for Birmingham against West Ham, and it was fucking horrible. <laughs> Honestly, it was horrible. The chicken run were were nasty. They were horrible. It was intimidating. But when you play for West Ham and they like you, it's the best place in the world. It is such a good place to play football because you always have a chance to beat the big teams, like your Man United, like your... Like, Back then, like your Arsenal's and and when Tottenham come to that, we always had a chance of beating them just because it was so tight and it was a horrible place for them to play because the fans made it intimidating in a very volatile place. Uh, one person I want to ask you about is Declan Rice. Obviously, a lot of speculation about him moving this summer. However, when you were at West Ham with Slavin, you gave him his debut at mm -hmm. Turf Moor. You then the next season you put him into the first team. Did you did you ever believe he was going to be this good, or could you see it from a very early stage that this guy had everything? Um, for me, he's still got a long way to go. He's still a young lad. He's still got a long way to go. Listen, like I said about the game at Man United, I that I I done for uh, Astro Sports. He was head and shoulders above every single player on that pitch. Not because he'd done anything spectacular. All he'd done, he won the ball. He got it. He drove. And he passed the ball to his teammates. Now that sounds silly, but the amount of times that players give the ball away, Declan Rice don't do that. He gets it and he gives it. Very rarely does he give the ball away. And when you got someone like that in midfield, you like a defensive midfield player, your other midfield players are full of confidence, and the players around you will be full of confidence because you know that Declan's going to get that ball and he's going to give it to you. Um, I, was, I wasn't critical of him, but the only thing it really, for me, it let him down was that when he got the ball, he'd either go sideways or backways. Now, like I said, the man, the man U game, when he like got the ball, he drove forward and he caused people problems because someone's got to come and close you down. And when they do, he just picks his players off. And at the moment, he has, listen, he has, he has a, a long way to go to be an exceptional footballer, but... You could always see that he's got a footballer's brain, that he plays football simple, simple. He's not spectacular. You know what I mean? He's never going to score goals from like 30, 35 yards or or diving headers or stuff like that. But what he does, he does it very, very, very well. Did you see a, a midfielder in him? Because obviously his first few games, um, he was looking like he was coming for as a central defender. If I'm honest, no, I didn't. Because I didn't think his feet were quick enough. Um, is a centre back. He's not the tallest centre back in the world. Um, so, but again, you, like I said, what he does, he just does simple. That's it. He don't try and complicate the game. Um, so it become the game becomes simple for him. And like I said, to keep going back to the man you get, it was it was so easy for him. He could have done anything with that football. But I would like him to. I mean, I think he's played 39 games this season, scored four goals, two assists. For me, that's not enough from him because of how good he is at the moment and how good he should be. For me, he should be scoring more goals and he should be assisting more because he's a great passer of the ball. Uh, obviously, he's, he's the captain at, at the moment. I just wanted to get your thoughts on, uh, not, not so much Declan as captain, but captaincy as a whole because I do think, I mean, you, you know a lot more than me, I, I Certainly thought that that Noble sort of grew into captaincy. Um, clearly, he's a, he's a character. Clearly, he's a, he's a talker and whatnot. Um, and and maybe just maybe Declan was the best person for the job after Mark had retired. But I do think it leaves us in a bit of a sticky situation in terms of actually. I'm, I don't look at the club and think I don't see a big standout leader there. Just drawing on your own experience, how important is that that West Ham sort that out? Not very important. And for me, a captain just goes and flips a coin. That's that's really? it. <laughs> at the end of the day, you've got ten other players on that pitch that should be giving instructions, encouraging, having a go at each other and things like that. And can't you you just can't rely on one player. 
Um, like I said, when I played, when I first went to West Ham, and obviously I wasn't captain, but you have you have Ray Stewart, you had Albin, you had Gailey. I mean, you you have people like Mark Ward, you have people like TC in in Machiavelli and people. That, they were all characters. All talkers, aren't they? Yeah. All talkers. All talkers. I know yeah. everybody don't talk. We have people like Alan Dickens. Alan wasn't a talker. Liam Brady wasn't a talker. But they, they had other attributes to their game. So everybody don't talk, whether you're captain or not. Um, but you, you do need characters in the side. But as I said, for me, a captain, all they do is go and flip a coin. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's great to be a captain of, of West Ham. I thoroughly enjoyed being captain. Um, but that, that was it. That was it. It don't give you any more money. It, it don't give you any more status or anything like that. It well, one thing just... I wanted to ask you for years, Julian, actually. Um, sorry, I've got off tangent, Gio, a little bit. Um, were you aware you intimidated other players? Were you aware of it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> love that. <laughs> love it. Love, it. love that. <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I, like I said, I, I come back from a suspension. I was playing against Arsenal at Highbury in the reserves. Um, and I remember Anders Limpa was, was lining up. And I knew, listen, he was a good player, but I knew he was on my side. And I said to him, I'm going to smash you all around Highbury. <laughs> and he went, you talking to me? I went, yeah, you know I'm talking to you. <laughs> and the thing is, he never come near me, which for me was good because um, he was a good player. Um, but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a case. I knew people were, were wary of me because, listen, 50-50s, I'm going there. But you also have people like Dennis Wise, I mean, Dennis would could look after himself. You know what I mean? No, he's always scraps with Dennis and things like that. But after the game, we would go and have a drink in the players' lounge and have a laugh and a joke and things like that. That's that's what it was back then. But you had to try and intimidate people because I played against people like Franz Card, Tony Daly, and Real Fox. Fast. Gone to Josie. Oh. They, they were faster than fast. <laughs> they were frightening. Yeah. Um, so, but lucky enough, back then you could kick fucking people. <laughs> But now you can you can touch people because you're going to get a yellow card if you do it again you're going to get sent off straight away. Back then you could do it four or five times, and the referee would come up to you and go, "One more, you're in the book." But then you knew you had one more, but then the next one you were going to be in the book. So back then it was it was a case of yeah I need to hit him first. So <laughs> I love that absolutely love that. And um, Julian, a week today. Your new book is out. Um, what's yep. that all about? Sell it. People are watching right now. Sell it to them. Um, it's just a, a book that's about my time in football, but majority at West Ham. There's good stories in there. There's rude stories in there. Um, I mean, like I said, with characters, people like John Monker, Paul Gascoigne, McAvenny, people like that. Just like It's just a, a funny book that's gone through like the stories have gone through with my career and and stuff like there's ups and downs in there obviously with my knees and, and things like that and what i'm like been doing since i retired so uh it's it's like a tongue tongue-in-cheek book with some good stories excellent well if you want to get your hands on that you can do at the hammers chat store but not only can you get it it will be signed by julian but not only can you get a signed book by julian you can also get a signed shirt and or a signed print which have been done by Canyon Town Line as well. You can go to hammerschatstore.com forward slash Julian Dix. Links in description and the pin comments. So go there, get yourself some signed merch by the legend. Myself and Gonzo get them signed up and we'll get everything posted out to you ASAP. But the book is out in a week. So get yourself a copy and take a trip down Julian Dix's memory lane. Uh, yeah, well, we're all looking forward to that, certainly. Um, obviously, wanted to talk a little bit about this season as well. How do you think, bearing in mind you've been in the managerial team at West Ham, how do you think Moyes has, has done at West Ham? Um, it's a difficult one as well because when you're in cup games, especially when you get to the final, you're playing a lot more games and a lot more teams. Um, and it is difficult. They haven't got the biggest squad in the world. They're not like a Man City where you can go, oh yeah, we'll have him and he's in the reserves and he's cost 45 million. Um a lot of players have played a lot of minutes in, in the games. Um, but, like I said, with the money they spend, it ain't been a great season premiership-wise. But, listen, we're not going down. So, again, it's 
I done the Q and A not so long ago, and people were saying that Moy should be sacked in this that, and the other, and I, I disagree because again, you, know, you can't always blame the managers. Like I said, I was at Watford with with Slav, and I mean they go through managers left, right, and centre. Yeah. You can't keep blaming the managers. The players have to take responsibility for this. Not not all the time, um, because there's certain players that fall out with managers and, and things like that. That always happens. But again, like we had, we had a, a manager called Lou Macari, and quite a, quite a lot of people didn't like him. But we still tried. You still work hard. You still give 100% because you have a duty to do that because of the, the club, the fans. That That's, that's what you have to do. Um, so it's one of them. Like I said, West Ham are a yo-yo club. And they have been for many, many years. Hopefully, it don't keep keep on because your heart can't take it. It's <laughs> is one of them. You, if you're halfway up the league, for me, it's been a good season. Not a great season. It's been a good season. Um, but you'd like to be there majority of the season. It's not not bordering on relegation zones. So, but again, it's like the fans have got something to look forward to. They got a cup final to look forward to. So, it's it's been a decent season. One thing I want to ask you there, I'm glad you've done that Q&A, actually, because that makes you aware that fans are unhappy with David Moyes. So I don't have to apply the context, which was a lot of fans are still unhappy with him. But it's also the style of play as well. Uh, the, the football's been a little bit boring this season. And even when we've won games, we haven't perhaps been the better side, but we've still got the three points at the end of the day. Um more about your experience when you were at West Ham. Under you were there under Slab, and there was a lot of external noise regarding Slab and Bilic's position for what felt like a while. I guess I've got a few questions here. Were you aware of it as a coach? Were you aware of what was going on in the terraces, and did it impact you in your ability to do the job at West Ham? Um, you you are aware of it because you hear things. Um, it's a bit more difficult when you're at the Olympic Stadium because you're so far away <laughs> from the fans. Um, but you do, you are aware of it. Um, and does it affect you? No, not, not really, because listen, you know, it's a weird one. Unless you're like a, a Guardiola or someone like that, you know, somewhere down the line that you're going to get sacked. It, that's, that's a part of football. It's not like in the area where John Lyle was there, he was there for 30 years and things like that. That doesn't happen anymore. You're lucky if you're at a club for two, three seasons, unless you are maybe a club or a Guardiola. Um, so you always have to have that in your mind as well. Um, because if you don't, you, you'll hear the littlest remarks going like, fucking West Ham is shit, the manager is shit, the coaches are shit. You hear, you hear all that. You hear all that. And I remember going back with West Brom when we played West Ham in the, in the cup. And I was sat there. And West Ham, fans, West Ham fans would give me the fucking wanker sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It is, it's mad. I, listen, don't get me wrong. I do understand it because obviously I was in West Brom and, and things like that. But it's, I find things quite funny when, when they do that. Um, but oh, not, many, not many of them, surely. No, it was only, it was only one. Right. David then, Sullivan. Like, we, we, <laughs> we scored a goal. Um, Connor Tangent scored a goal and then I, I looked round and he just went, you wanker, like that. And I was thinking, Hell, what have I done? But it is, listen, football's passionate. Yeah. Not so much nowadays, but it's still a passionate game. The fans are passionate about their club and they want the best for their club. And at West Ham, they want nice football. They want good football. And I, and I understand that, but I would, for me, I would rather win games not playing nice to nice football um, to stay in the Premiership because God forbid if West Ham ever went down, it would kill the club. Yeah. If you went to the Championship, it would kill the club. Particularly in that stadium. Oh uh, Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, whilst you were at the club, uh, who who bought the players? Was it was it Slav? Was it the Scouts or was it Sullivan? No, it was it was it was Slav. <laughs> I'm, it's weird because I had a conversation with Slav when we were. At, Watford, um, and I said to him about because at Watford, for me, I don't think any of them were his picks. Um, but so I said to him, What 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 happened at West Ham? He said, No, he said, Like, I, I picked most of the players, not all of them, but yeah. most of them. Um, so obviously, David Gold and David Sullivan said, Look, said to him, 
you go and pick your players. Obviously, you can't go and spend £100 million on the player. Um, he said, but you can pick your players. They're, they're your, it's your decisions, your choices. He said, but they always might bring one or two in that they thought might do a job, um, which, which you don't mind at the end mm. of the day because it is their club. As long as Slav has a choice in players or a manager has a choice in players, it's not a problem for the chairman to go, listen, I've, I've got this player. Because you live and die by your mistakes. So if somebody else is bringing all these players in and they're crap and you get the sack, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's not right. Yeah. It's not right. You should have. You should make the decisions. And if they're crap and you start going down, they go, right, yeah, listen, we're getting rid of you. It's fair enough. All right, second last question. Um, it's the sort of hot topic among West Ham fans today, Julian. Um, basically, all season, Mikel Antonio has been doing a podcast with Newcastle striker Callum Wilson. And throughout the season, he's been quite honest on it. And he's spoken about Moyes' tactics before. In January, he's spoken about potentially leaving West Ham in the transfer window. This week, he's done eight other podcasts with another YouTube channel. And within there, he's made comments about Skamaka, about how Skamaka's a top player, but Manjo doesn't really know how to use him. He's spoken about how Moyes has tried to change his style. It didn't work, so we've had to revert back. And to quote Antonio, he said, as a striker at West Ham, you've got to feed on scraps. Now, my question to you isn't necessarily about what Antonio said. It's more about the fact that Antonio has been quite honest in doing these podcasts, which isn't really something that happened in your day, the, the whole the, the new digital thing, which is you know what we're doing at the minute as well. But I guess you can come at this from any perspective as a former teammate, a former captain, a former coach of a Penny League club, a West Ham fan. But what do you make of Antonio being quite outspoken and truthful about what's going on at West Ham? Well, if if, if I was a manager and it's true in what he said, I would drag him and I would find him and I would drop him. Because at the end of the day, you can't, as a player, you can't undermine the manager. If you go in the office and go, listen, David, your tactics are shit. <laughs> Fucking players are shit. This shit, that shit. Then you go, fine, not a problem if it's behind closed doors. But you cannot go. If it was the other way around and David Boys was going, Fucking um, Mikel Antonio is fucking useless. He can't trap a bag of cement, can't do this. Mikel Antonio would be upset. 100% he would yeah. be upset. So when you flip it on the other side, it's not very nice for a player to start caning the manager on a podcast. So but for me, have some balls, take them in the office and go, right, this is what I truly believe. So, but if it was me and I was a manager, yeah, I would drag him in, I would find him and I would drop him. I would love it if that was Moise's <laughs> answer to go on a podcast and say, that Antonio, you know what he's talking about? He can't trap a bag of cement. He can barely kick the ball. He keeps falling over. Um <laughs> That would, be, that would be good retribution. Um, out of interest, just before I, I, we finish up, did that ever happen under Macari? Did you lot ever go in and say, oi, this is crap? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we had discussions with him and because he wanted us to play long ball. Yeah. And we had people like Alan Devonshire, <laughs> Liam Brady. You know what I mean, we had, we had good players that wanted to play football the way it should be played. Um, and we went, no, we're not, we're not doing that. We're playing how we play. That's it. And he would love, we would be in training and he would get me to get the ball and smack it down the line. So I would do that in training. But when it comes to the games, I would play it inside it, whether it's to Alan Dickens or things like that. And I understand there's obviously other ways to play football. I understand that. But we had good footballers in our team. Um, if it was just about maybe getting the ball and smacking it up to Ian Dowie or, or people like whoever's up front, that that's fine. I have no problems with that. But we have we have proper players in our yeah. team. So yeah, you, don't, you don't want to bypass we, Liam Brady in midfield. We, yeah. No, we just fucking ignored Lou. <laughs> there you go. Nice. So did we. Um listen, mate, thank you very much. Final question. Yep. Um in terms of next season, West Ham, uh, sort of aspirations. And any thoughts on where you think what, what you think the club should be doing, where we should be going for next season? Yeah, well, obviously they have to, it's a progression. You have to you have to buy players. Um, you have to buy players better than what you've got. For me, we need a decent striker, and it depends what happens with Declan as well. Um, hopefully, Touchwood Declan will still be at West Ham. Um, can I see that happening? Maybe not. If someone comes in for 120 million, they're going to snap their hands off. 
Yeah. To be honest, so would I. So, you know what I mean? 120 million is a ridiculous amounts of money. Um, but they have to reinvest and not say, yeah, you can have 60 million. Just give them the whole lot. Go and buy like three or four top, top players. Because you can, like in West Ham, you can att attract top players. Maybe at the bowling, you, you couldn't really attract the, the top, top players there. But at it, it, the London Stadium, because it's Sebastian's, it's a lovely stadium, um, they, they could probably attract top players. Um, so they have to reinvest the money if Declan goes. Well, Julian, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed that, actually. I really yeah. enjoyed that. That's yeah, gone that's quick. Um, I had a lot more questions I could have asked you, but thank you for your time, Julian. No problem. I enjoyed it. And you guys at home, if you fancy getting a signed Julian Dix book, a signed Julian Dix shirt, or a signed Julian Dix print, head to hammerchatstore.com forward slash Julian Dix. Click the link in the description or the pinned comments. The book is out next week, so go get your pre-orders in now. Anyway, that's enough for myself and Gonzo. But if you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like on it by clicking the thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to Hammer's Chat. Myself and Gonzo, we'll catch you in a bit.